Aloha, let's make the three drop Tahitian pearl pendant together today. You'll need some pearls, some eyewear, your tools. I have a chain, round, flat nose pliers and cutters, and some 24 gauge gold fill half hard wire. So let's get started. This is the basic wire wrap. We have a full tutorial on basic wire wrap that I'll put into the description below so that you can do a step-by-step -step review before you start this project. Here I'm doing a loop, opening it up, and I'm adding a little drop to the bottom. I wanted some movement to this pendant, so you can put a tiny charm, a little drop, anything that will just make it have movement, eye-catching, and make it active. Then it looks really alive. I'm stacking on the pearls and in this design, I'm going from the smallest pearl at the top to the largest pearl at the bottom. So I'm also using the Baroque shape to mimic that. So you'll see that each pearl that I'm putting on also goes from small to big as I stack them on. A quick design tip would be Pay attention to the colors. There's a natural graduation of colors in the pearls and you can use that to your advantage. So if you wanna do like an ombre effect, you can make it go light to dark on each bead. So as it progresses, it'll be light to dark on the small bead, light to dark on the medium. In some cases, you won't be able to use the bead from big to small, but you can focus on using the color to have movement and bring your eye in one direction. When making something like a pendant where it's a very short section, you can keep your loops on the smaller side, maybe three and a half to four millimeters round at largest so that your piece doesn't get really long in length. It makes it also easier to focus on the beads. The larger the loop, it kind of pulls your eye away from the focal point. And so if you can keep your loops small, all your attention will be on your main part, which in this case is the Tahitian pearls. The last thing you might notice is that I flip my tool in my hand. Rather than removing the tool each time, I just flip the tool in my hand and I find that that makes it a lot easier and faster. So I am always about the economy of motion. So again, this is just something that I do if it works for you, I encourage you again to do it and give it a shot because it does take a while to learn a new technique and get really good at it, but you can do this. You definitely can. You may notice that I'm using my round nose pliers to turn the 90 degree angle. Now in our tutorials, we use our chain nose pliers to do that, but because the round nose pliers are so awesome with these Lindstroms that it can turn a very nice sharp 90 degree and the wire is on the thinner side at 24 gauge, so it works. And if you find something that works for you, just do it. Don't worry so much about rules or anything else that you've been learning. If it works for you and it works for your tools, I highly encourage you to go with it and enjoy the process. Do what works for you. Now that I'm done wrapping the pendant, I'm using my chain nose pliers to tuck the ends in. You can tuck the ends in along the way as you go, but it is a time saver to pick up the tool one time and do all the ends all at once. So when you're tucking them in, make sure that you're pressing it along the curve so that the wire goes completely down and you can fix your loops at the same time. So put them in alignment. There it is. You can have a pendant in less than five minutes. I recorded this in real time so you can see how fun and fast it is to make your own jewelry. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Aloha.